This is the first part of the lesson for consuming the environment. Urbanization, which might seem like a bit of a stretch, uh, but I want to show how the things that we consume impact the growth of cities. So you want to think about a particular commodity in this case, and that's uh, fish meal. And then we'll think about a town in Peru called Chimbote. And ultimately, what we want to do is have uh, a question about you know, how what we're eating here affects people in far off places. First uh, part of the lecture, though, we'll look at the idea of urban environmental history. So, as we were saying in previous lectures, environmental history is something quite new. Uh, it's only about 50 years old as a field of study. Uh, within that, the role of cities in environmental history is perhaps even newer. Um, but there are three main areas of focus in environmental history. The first looks at urban growth and studies how the growth of cities impacts the environment and vice versa, how the environment impacts the growth of cities. Right? Oftentimes, uh, cities grow because of some sort of resource endowment, a natural resource that's close, uh, or at other times it's because of uh, commerce or shipping possibilities. So on the screen we have a picture of San Francisco and you can see that over the course of the 20th century, San Francisco grew uh, quite a bit, uh, now encompassing pretty much all of the uh, San Francisco Bay. San Francisco was, of course, home to the California Gold Rush. Really, it was the areas to uh, the east of San Francisco where the gold was, but all of the commerce was concentrated in San Francisco. It has a naturally protected bay that's very important for the coastal defenses, um, for the military, and uh, also it is, you know, a excellent uh, place to uh, disembark on your way to Asia. But San Francisco is not really apt for s human settlement. Uh, it's a very difficult geography, lots of rolling hills, susceptible to earthquakes, and uh, there's no fresh water source anywhere close. So for San Francisco to have grown the way that it has over the past 100 years, 150 years now, uh, is rather remarkable. So environmental historians look at these types of issues when studying urban growth. A second field of study uh, revolves around pollution, uh, either how governments deal with pollution, how people deal with pollution, or how these two groups band together or work separately to solve pollution problems, the impact that this pollution has on people's lives, and the uh, role of companies in polluting and how that affects people. And we've seen some examples of that already as we've gone through the class, right? So on the right side, there's two pictures of uh, Beijing, one when they are restricting the cars on the road and the other when they're not. And then this picture on the left is Pittsburgh uh, at the height of the steel production. And there's been a lot of environmental history about Pittsburgh because uh, they have been able to clean up. Right? And it was the sort of the elite people in Pittsburgh that really worked to uh, clean up their city uh, as opposed uh, to uh, you know leaving it uh, a sooty, uh, polluted mess, right? Pittsburgh is now one of the nicer uh, cities in the country, although it no longer has a steel industry. So it's a really interesting case study. And the third thing that we see in environmental history is uh, the extension of infrastructure and public services and how uh, things like building sewer systems, building electrical grids or paving roads impacts the environment, impacts people's lives and where people stay. We can also look at things like garbage collection, uh, how uh, the just ability to live in a city uh, is made so much better if somebody picks up the city's trash or if 
there is a sewage system that takes the city's bodily waste and dumps it somewhere that's not in the city itself. So we look at the political ecology of these different services, right? Who gets access to garbage collection? Who doesn't? Who gets access to having a clean water connection to their home? And who doesn't? Where do they decide to build sewers and sewage treatment plants? And then how the access or lack of the access affects people's lives. So on the screen we have a picture on the right of uh, Ghana uh, in Africa and this is a riverbed that has become a garbage dump and how they uh, haven't been able to clean that up. On the uh, right side of the screen is a picture of Via Flamable you might remember from an earlier reading in Argentina uh, and how the Shell Corporation has put a oil refinery right next to a very poor community and has polluted that community. Okay. So it's in these three realms that we want to concentrate on uh, the urban environment of uh, this town in uh, Peru called Chimbote and we'll talk about this in uh, lecture four.